Cypress Development Corp. is developing a world-class lithium resource in the heart of Clayton Valley, Nevada. The size of the resource makes the Clayton Valley project a premier asset with the potential to impact the future of lithium supply. Cypress Development Corp. trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol CYP, the OTCQB, symbol CYDVF, and on Frankfurt, symbol C1Z1. For more information, please visit our website, cypressdevelopmentcorp.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is market historian Bob Hoy. He's the chief investment strategist for ChartsAndMarkets.com. Welcome back to the show, Bob. Yeah. Hi, Jim. And uh, as I always like to say, it's Friday morning. Bob, we're kicking off the show with uh, three listener questions. The first question for Bob is, assuming we have a big equity sell-off this fall leading to an eventual crash, then how many months would the sell-off take? In terms of cycles, the 1929 crash was 90 years ago, and that sell-off seemed a bit more painful and extended than 28 or 2008-2009 also assuming a big market sell-off. Could the gold miners break down through the May 2019 lows? Well, yeah, it's that's on, that's a concerning question because, yeah, the if things are going to go wrong, it'll be discovered in the fall, which is what we've been talking about. And the thing is, before that, to measure how right things have been, and my gosh, you've got valuations uh, for the S&P at extremely high, higher than in 2000 with the dot-com bubble. And you've had momentum surges and sentiment numbers that you usually find only near major peaks. And you're, you're getting changes. You've got weakening industrial commodity prices. That's bad. The treasury bill rate has been coming down since March. That's bad. And the yield curve has been widening, and that's not good. So one then falls back on history, and we know that on four, or five, four out of five of the last great bubbles, uh, the heavy-duty stuff was in October, and then sort of uh, churning around and clearing the markets in November. And one of the great bubbles, and it really was a big one, was 1825. And on that one, the final clearing of unsupportable positions didn't complete until between Christmas and New Year's. It was the guys at the Bank of England didn't have a good Christmas on that one. So, uh, yeah, and then after that, Mentioned something about uh, other booms that uh, didn't lead to a long contraction, uh, like the 2007 bubble. Well, it was a, a terrific speculation, as was 2000. But, Jim, they didn't have the characteristics of what I've called a classic bubble. And then... And as you know, also, other people have been calling, uh, you know, the last 20 years as a period of serial bubbles, of which, you know, 2000 was one and 2007 was another, and here's yet another. But of these serial bubbles, uh, the one that could be ending now seems to be the one that has the closest characteristics with the previous great bubbles. And this is... Sure, it's part opinion, Jim, but basically it's just matching up the excesses. Uh, you've had real long interest rates come down. Check that one. You've had the real price of gold come down with the bubble. Yes, but this one, real price of gold is turning up, which is something that's saying the bubble is ending. Uh, real long interest rates, of course, with the crazy uh, bidding up of the bond prices until recent, uh, that hasn't turned yet. Uh, I think it will. 
The other one is that with the Great Bubble, you have the real price for, like, copper going up with the boom and then going down, and it has been going down. So there is enough there, Jim, to say that uh, we're in a classic bubble, in which case the contraction subsequent could be serious. We'll have more with Bob Hoy and more listener questions after this. Grand Portage Resources, Herbert Gold Project in Southeast Alaska, highlights increased gold resource, indicated and inferred, of 860,000 ounces, in excess of 10 grams per ton gold. Expansion drilling is planned on the Herbert Gold property for the summer of 2019. Grand Portage Resources trading symbols are GPG on the TSX Venture, GPTRF on the OTCQB, and GPB on Frankfurt. For more information, please visit our website, grandportage.com. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome back. We're chatting with Bob Hoy. Bob, uh, another listener question here. Assuming there are liquidity problems in the fall, can Treasury yields resist or retest or break the recent lows? Where is the low in on long-term Treasuries? Some pundits say the yield on the 10-year Treasury is going to 1%. Also, assuming the semiconductor sector suffers a decline, then how will this affect the price of silver? Will silver follow gold or copper in the next crisis? Yeah, Jim, that's a good question. The, uh, yeah, the interest rates uh, is, it, in the long treasuries, the high-grade end, and, and that includes, of course, high-grade corporates, and also in the U.S. The municipal bonds, they really soared to technical excesses. And yes, the the story with the move uh, is that it would go to 1%, and I've seen many that it would go to zero. And we saw this in June of 2016 when then the German yield was at 0 0.40, and then the tout on the U.S. and Canadian bond markets was that, yeah, we're going to go down to those lows. And I remember uh, talking with some guy, a very well-informed trader, and I said, no way, it's not going to do it, because our technicals were all ringing bells and whistles, which has again happened. So the analysis we did then was that the – to analyze the German market would be kind of hopeless, because it's such a one-way street and such dominance by the, the central banks. Forget about it. But – we argued that the U.S. market had so many different players in it and great passions that the technical measures there would be effective, and you'd get a sell-off in uh, long in the bond future. And of course, that worked out, and it did hit the German yields because it went from I think it was 0.44 percent at the low to 1.4 percent. So it was a quite a whack to the bond market. And this is exactly what we're saying now, it, it have been saying through the summer, technical excesses, uh, the U.S. market will crack, and it'll hit the European market. So, yeah, this is about to happen. And uh, what was the other part of the question, Jim? Uh, it was about uh, gold and silver dropping. Oh, yeah, the semiconductors. Yeah. Yeah, the consumption of silver is always... Uh, greater than the supply, but in times of wild speculation such as we are now, they, uh, and when it turns to a contraction, silver really underperforms gold, uh, and it's what we call the, uh, the monetary, or the metal, uh, credit spread. So in a rally for gold and silver, both will go up, and silver will typically outperform. So then what you want to watch for is the excesses in silver. Uh, these have been reached and uh, in August, and we were then calling for a correction in the precious metal sector. And 
one of the things that we want to watch for that would indicate that things are getting scary is uh, on some day when silver is down sharply relative to gold. So we're watching for that one. So good question on silver because there are times when you want to ignore the supply-demand stories and just look at the financial side. We'll have another question for Bob when we return. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlan, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the 2019 drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Bob Hoy. We have a third listener question. The question, Mario Draghi says he's very concerned about the impact of negative rates on pension funds. He said the European Central Bank is closely monitoring the negative effects of its decisions, yet is going away present for the world, and I guess Europe, was to cut the deposit rate 10 basis points deeper to minus 0.5%. Seems a little two-faced there, Bob. Yep. Meanwhile, Christine Lagarde proposes buying green bonds to fight climate change. Next to saving the business cycle, they now engage in saving the planet. I find well, it absurd that anybody believes these guys anymore. I wonder when the point comes when Joe Sixpack is disgusted enough about the lies and starts revolting. Oh, my gosh. Two... Two aspects there. Very good stuff. Yeah. The reason why you've got down to zero rates and then in some cases the uh, much discussed negative rate is that the central bankers are all pursuing a theory that doesn't work. And they, and it is really simple. They, they take a look at a business cycle and this was done, you know, generations ago. And they see that credit expands with the business expansion. And then they conclude that the credit expansion causes the business expansion. Of course, these are just two things that occur at the same time. And they're confusing correlation, which this is, with causation, which they invented. And it's the old story, Jim, about the uh, roosters crowing in the morning and they cause the sun to rise. So... The the whole of economic intrusion is based upon what's called a primitive syllogism, and it doesn't work. So then what they do is they keep applying what doesn't work, and where, well, here's the way to look at it, is to look at the times when it does work, (laughs) or appears to work, like in the 60s and 1970s when you had prices rising, inflation and all that sort of stuff, and then it it appeared that their monetary stimulus did create rising prices, and that then uh, showed that you had an expanding economy. But that was when the public had chosen to speculate in real things, tangible assets and commodities and producer prices and wages all went up, and it was inflation. And then you had the world trans it transform itself into inflation and financial assets, and this is what the monetary theories don't understand. They, they only know that if the Fed expands its portion of the credit markets, that will increase the economy. But when you're in a period of inflation and financial assets, it goes into bidding up stocks and bonds and also real estate. So you don't have the link from pushing credit 
to economic expansion, and they keep doing it. And this is, of course, what has driven yields down to uh, less than zero, to negative. And uh, he can't quit it. And then you got Lagarde proposing to start another huge buying of green bonds. So they're going to fund climate change initiatives, in which will inject money into the economy. But uh, it's not going to work. And the also the other thing is that when the Federal Reserve was formed in 1913, the people behind it then did understand that when you had a financial setback, that it would be followed by a recession. So then their theory was with the Federal Reserve as lender of last resort, they would move at appropriate time and prevent the credit crises that preceded recessions. Of course, it's never worked. Uh, the um, You've had 18 recessions since the Fed was formed. And so the um, it just plain doesn't work. And so here we are now. We're into the period when some liquidity problems can be discovered, and the European Central Bank has been throwing money at the market, uh, as the Fed has been selling securities. But I think it's it's it turned easy here recently in cutting the discount rate, and if any sign of uh, financial pressures in here, they will move to ease. But it goes with the explanation or the evidence that you have, which is 18 recessions. And what it means is that when you have the financial problem, which is always due to excessive speculation, then the margin clerks take over, and their job description is to get the accounts in line, and thus the liquidation becomes uh, irresistible. And it's always happened in the fall. So it's going to be very interesting over the next uh, few weeks. And these three questions we got are really, each one slightly different, but they're to the point. Bob, Japan's local banks are in trouble. Is that because they have zero or negative interest rates? No, I don't think that's bothering them too much. It's just that whenever you have a boom, there's always the new or young or aggressive small bank that gets, well, aggressive and starts taking on loans that the more prudent and bigger banks are not taking. So this is where it shows up. And even, even back in 1825 with that great bubble, the problems began to appear in uh, regional banks outside of London and there is one great story about where, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, they were careful bankers, and they needed cash, so sent a guy with a coach and a team of horses into London, and he had a chest of uh, bullion and, and coin, and uh, coming back to wherever it was, uh, in a hurry, uh, one of the front wheels on the coach broke. So, and he had a team of horses, of course, with the pole in front to kind of keep things up. But then they they moved the heavy box of uh, of cash to the opposite corner of the coach, and uh, to keep that far side wheel up. And there's a cartoon about it in the literature, and it's called balancing the cash. So where they used a a box of bullion and coin to help. Uh, keep the coach going, and they did make it back in time to stave off that uh, bankruptcy. But there was nothing anybody could do, and you went into uh, a severe contraction, and then it turned out to be a long one. So there's a pattern to these things, and uh, as I say, Jim, the next few weeks are going to be very interesting. Bob, thank you so much for chatting with us. Well, there we are, and... uh, I always enjoy our chats, and and particularly the uh, listeners who came in with such good questions. My guest has been market historian Bob Hoy. He's the chief investment strategist for chartsandmarkets.com. And as uh, you've just heard, we do answer listener questions. You can send them to 
info at HowStreet.com. Find us on Twitter at HowStreet. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.